Good evening, and welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show in which it pays to be economical with the truth. On Lee Mac's team tonight, a seven times world snooker champion. I play a bit more myself, but at my local club, there's always a massive queue. It's Stephen <laughs> Hendry. And a comedian who originally trained in acting, but I guess unlike her fellow graduates, she just couldn't find any work as a barista. It's Maisie Adam. <laughs> And David Mitchell's team tonight, a TV presenter who was discovered during a modelling talent search. Well, weren't we all? <laughs> <laughs> it's Laura Whitmore. <laughs> and a comedian who used to work in a call centre, so if he doesn't make you laugh, at least he can help with your PPI. It's Chris <laughs> McCausland. <laughs> We begin with round one, Home Truths, where our panellists read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before, they've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. Chris, you are first up. OK, well, I'm, I'm, I'm still blind. Neither of my PPIs work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, David, would you save us all a lot of time and read my card out yes, for me, please? gladly. During lockdown, I bought a pogo stick to use as a home school teaching aid. <laughs> <laughs> right, Lee's team. OK, so, Chris, have you got children? Um, just the one. And this was for, what, your homeschooling PE or something? Yes. When we did homeschooling, we split up the tasks. I, I was in charge of PE and maths, and my wife was in charge of reading and art for obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> At what age is your child? During lockdown, she was six. And do you do anything else for PE or just pogo stick? <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite a lazy guy, Lee. So I realised that when you're on a pogo stick and you're bouncing away, <laughs> what you're trying to do is see how many you can do. How many repetitions without touching the ground? Yeah, and maths is You have is to also... touch the ground, Lee, to be fair. Otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> otherwise it's levitating, which we still haven't mastered. I appreciate you said it for comic effect, Rob, but you know exactly what I meant. <laughs> well, what I tried to do is I, 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 I realised that how many is also what, what you do often in maths. And I could consolidate all of my teaching efforts into one tidy little package of minimal effort. <laughs> so I invented pogo mats. OK. And um, you just shout out some sums and they have to bounce out the answers. But are they experienced in pogo sticking? Because it's quite hard. Well, I mean, it does help if you can use a pogo stick first, so you have to get over that hurdle, but that's, you know... You have to get over a hurdle as well. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you said that for comic effect. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. We have a pogo stick. Yeah. Well, it's, and... it's Chris's card. Make him do it. <laughs> I don't think the BBC's got enough money to cover the insurance on this. <laughs> don't worry, I've got this covered, Chris. Like the card, let David do it for you. <laughs> there is a pogo stick behind you, I believe. Oh, my gosh. There it is. <sighs> don't do it there, and make sure you're two metres away from me. <laughs> right. Down you go. Now, Chris... Hang on, let me have a practice go first. He's not doing this it, Chris. This is going Chris. really well, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Dead easy. Um, are you ready? Yes. What is 8 minus 5? OK. The problem I've got now is if I bounce and fall off after, say, 2, you don't know if I'm bad at pogo or bad at maths. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. 1, 2, 3. Give it yeah. Well, this is, this, is, this is good, because you've got to get them all right if you want to do dinner tonight. Um, <laughs> I've got one. Shall I just see how many I can do? Yeah, let's see how many you can do. I'll this try and jump point. up onto that. How about oh, no. Don't do it, Lee. Don't do it! One, oh, no, two, do it. three, four, <laughs> five, <laughs> six, <laughs> seven! Oh. Oh. <laughs> I've got no idea what's going on. So, having experienced it... Yes. ..do you think he's telling the truth? What do we think? I don't know, there's still dead pogo sticks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. I imagine how hard you could hit the ball with a spring-mounted snooker cue. I mean, <laughs> that's... <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. So, what are you thinking about this story? The more I think about it, the more I think it wouldn't work, because the white ball's going to spin back. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> We're talking now about the maths and the pogo. Right. Gotcha. Do you reckon it's true? 
I think it's true that Chris is, is lazy. I'm not um, really blind, he just gets me out of doing things. <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, tell me about it, mate. I do it all the time myself. <laughs> How do you think I park so close to Sainsbury's? Um... <laughs> <laughs> I think he's lying. You think he's lying? I think he's lying as you well. You think he's yeah. lying? We'll, we'll go with my team and say he's lying. OK, saying it's a lie. So, Chris, maths on the pogo stick. Was it true or was it a lie? Pogo maths, copyright, Chris McCausland, 2020. True. Oh! oh. Sorry. Well, I think I'm lying. Yes, it's true. Chris did use a pogo stick to teach his daughter maths. Uh, Stephen, you're next. Before every World Championship final, I used to give a motivational team talk to my snooker queue, or as I called him, <laughs> Sir Potts a lot. <laughs> <laughs> David's I team. Hope that's true. I just hope it's true. Could you give us a flavour of the Ooh. motivational talk you'd give Sir Potts a lot? <laughs> Um, I used to put them in the sort of the corner of the dressing room. Yeah. Stephen, I don't want to interrupt your flow, but <laughs> if you are going to... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, he's not looking for drugs again, is he? <laughs> <laughs> this, and it's not just any cue, this is a cue signed by one of the greatest snooker players of all time, Ronnie O'Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> now, why don't you recreate the motivational talk? You're in the dressing room, ready to go out. You've done your practice, and it's just, come on, it's me and you today. <laughs> you and I get to the table, we're just going to pot every ball, we're going to clear up and win the frame. Come on, Sir Potts, hello. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've been motivated. Stephen, I'm buying into this, but if you were playing and it wasn't going that well and you came in for the break, would you, would you give it a stern talking to? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would sometimes come in and, and say, well, what are you doing? You know, because it's not because it obviously it's nothing to do with me. It'd be great if the queue went. What am I doing? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> when did you first acquire Sir Potts a lot? Uh, fourteen. You were um, fourteen years old. Yep. And it got actually broken um, later on in my career. I was I come back from Thailand. Yes. We couldn't take the queues on board after 9/11. Yes. So we had to put them in in the luggage. That's the problem with 9/11. The queues got a lot worse, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> So you're a snooker fan, you seem to know the lingo. I haven't always been blind, so I used to watch it and I played it as well until my eyesight got worse. So I had to reduce myself down to a pool table and then, you know, and then drafts. Um... <laughs> 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 I do believe it's true because I think it's the kind of thing that successful sportsmen do. They have these little quirks and it's what makes them amazing. And Stephen was amazing. Aww. Thank you. Yeah. Now, um, Laura, Yes. what do you think? I think it's true, because when you speak about Sir Potts a lot, your eyes light up and you're so enthusiastic and excited. <laughs> so for that alone, I just feel like no-one else could get that excited about a stick. So I think it's true <laughs> because of that. <laughs> well... I must admit, I'm pretty yes. lost without my stick. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it a talking to now. We need to get to the bank today. Yeah. Are, you, are you feeling up to your game? Have you given your stick a name, though? Sir Fines a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, David, what about when, you? When did you name your cue Sir Potts a lot? Um, it was a name, actually, my granny oh. gave. Oh. I, it too, so. I have to say, if this is a lie, I'm going to totally reevaluate you as a human being. <laughs> <laughs> I can believe that. You, firstly, in high-pressure sporting situations, there's going to be a certain amount of superstition. You want to do the same thing again and again and again. That's why I never wear trousers for this show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in a way, there's a clash, isn't there, between the triviality of Sir Potts a lot and the seriousness of the pep talk, and yet the story about the grandmother giving the name. Oh, yes, that makes sense of it, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. Of course. There will be something lovable in that very triviality because of the family link. <laughs> so it's either true or it is a diabolical lie. <laughs> David's been under a lot of pressure. <laughs> <this year. laughs> I'm going to take a risk on true. If only one more time, I'm yeah. going to believe. You're going to dare to dream. Yeah. All right, Stephen Hendry, were you telling us the truth about Sir Potts a lot or were you telling us a lie? It was a diabolical <laughs> lie. Oh! Oh, there it goes. There it goes, the last glimmer of 
faith in humanity. <laughs> Flush down the toilet. <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Stephen didn't give motivational team talks to his snooker cue. Maisie, you're next. Once, while trying to impress a date, I landed flat on my back in a flower bed. <laughs> David Steen, what were you doing to try and be impressive? It was actually leaving the date. Oh. Uh, I accidentally left from a great height. When you said that, I thought, like, being on your back was what you were doing to impress them. Like, no, getting I'm not on that your kind back. of girl, Laura. OK. <laughs> Laura, everything isn't Love Island. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm confused as to where I am. I... Laura, you say you're confused about where you are. Just look to your left. You know you're not on Love Island. <laughs> <laughs> oh, harsh. Now, tell me, Maisie, where did this happen? This was, um... Uh, in New Zealand. New Zealand? Oh. Yeah. I got to know a, a guy out there and oh. he asked if I wanted to go back and see his record collection. <laughs> behave. <laughs> behave. <laughs> we got talking about music and we uh, went back to his house to listen to records. But he, he tried to play guitar along to the record. He oh, sounds like he an yeah. awful human being. He, so, so I decided I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head off Was now. that the difference between fancying him and not? The fact that when he, got he the played guitar, guitar along to the record. You would not like to go around to his house. <laughs> <laughs> so I called a taxi and sat on... I was perched on the window with the window open and I thought, it's arrived, it's outside, and I went, thanks very much, see you later. And because I thought we were on the ground floor, I thought I'd just swing my legs over the window and run across the lawn. <laughs> Which floor were you on, Maisie? So, if the, the window... The floor. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot the 19 minutes going up in a lift. <laughs> No, see, so one floor up. What, one floor, but yeah. I just forgot that. We've You'd been chatting for a while. You'd climbed the in a state of high arousal and therefore <laughs> forgotten about them. Is that right? You should write erotica. Um... <laughs> Who, yes, who's to say I don't? I have many names online. <laughs> Fifty shirts of grey. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I got a text saying Yoruba's outside. I said... See you later, then, and sort of twirled round, and at that moment, I clocked out it was not on the ground floor. <laughs> you fell an entire story. Or she made up a whole story. <laughs> <laughs> what happens once you leave the window ledge and you're in the air? I just remember landing on the small of my back because I was so winded, I couldn't speak, and he appeared out of the window and was like, oh, Blimey, why'd you jump out the window? Now again in a New Zealand accent. <laughs> <laughs> and so then I had to um, commando crawl across the garden with him watching from above. Was he still playing the guitar? <laughs> 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 and what was the taxi driver doing? He must have seen this. He didn't do anything. He just wound down the window and was like, just so you know, the meter's <laughs> running. <laughs> <laughs> All right, David's team, what are you thinking? The mechanics of the situation doesn't add up for me, so a lie. Laura? I just don't know why you didn't land on your face. I don't get why you landed on your back. And that's the reason why I think it's a lie. You say, I think it's true. Do Interesting. you? Interesting. But if my teammates say it's a lie, we'll go lie. Maisie, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? <laughs> that was true. <gasps> <laughs> well done. <laughs> it's true. Maisie did land in a flower bed trying to impress a date. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. This week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest. It's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Neil. <laughs> so, Laura, what is Neil to you? This is Neil and he's the health and safety officer who I mistakenly pushed in the pool at the Love Island rap party. <laughs> right, Laura's wet workmate. Chris, how do you know Neil? This is Neil, and I was once forced to stay at his house because I'd handed my own keys in to a lost property office. <laughs> Chris's sleepover saviour. And finally, David, tell us about your relationship with Neil. David, look at him. You have never met that man in <laughs> <you>. <laughs> On the contrary, 
This is Neil, and I once sat on his shoulders to get a better look at a fat chaffinch. <laughs> <laughs> so, there we have it. Lee, where do you want to start? Laura. Yes. When was this? Back in February, Cape Town. Why is there a health and safety guy particularly on Love Island? Was he giving out condoms? <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, you need health and safety on Love Island. OK. Um, but I actually had never met Neil before. I thought he was someone else. Who did you think he was? I thought he was Cliff. Who's Cliff? Cliff was my driver. Oh, you deliberately pushed Cliff? Yeah. But it's not Cliff, no. it's Neil. Yeah, well, Cliff is yes. a big guy and he's got tattoos. Oh. And he was wearing all black because everyone was wearing, like, black T-shirts and stuff if they were a crew. Yes. And over the course of six weeks, we're pranking each other. As you do. So, like, one day he gave me, like... Chlamydia? <laughs> <laughs> Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Silly things like put chili in your coffee and stuff. Oh, you so know, this is your driver, food. Cliff. Yeah, but like he becomes your pal because when you're over there, you don't know many people. <laughs> so you you see who you think is Cliff. Well, Cliff is a tall guy with tattoos. Yeah, and you think I want to see. Cliff. And he was at the very edge. And he was talking to one of the the girls, so yes. I thought it'd be quite funny to. So how does Neil know. react? Well, he was quite wet, so I didn't really see him. <laughs> I just saw when I turned around on the other side of the pool. I saw Cliff. Oh. Oh. oh, no. Did he take it well, or was he...? Um... I mean, he looks like he's still in a bit of a mood with you. <laughs> I don't remember there being laughing. So he was a bit tense? It was a bit tense, yeah. And this is the first time you've seen him since? I, I wrote him an email. I can't even remember what it said, but it was very brief. Mm. Oh. Mm. And it's right. actually quite <laughs> awkward now. <laughs> How much of Love Island have you watched, David? I mean, is it...? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, what? I haven't seen that much of it. But no, an, how much of it have you seen? It's an embarrassing question to answer in the context of one of the programme makers, isn't it, well, Robin? I, mean, I think on some level you know that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's Laura. Who would you like to quiz next? OK, uh, Chris. Sorry, could you remind us again, Chris? This is Neil, and I was once forced to stay at his house because I'd handed my own keys into a lost property office. Whereabouts is the house? I live in the, um, the, the, the leafy royal borough of Kingston-upon-Thames. OK. So, which lost property office did you hand the keys to? The Roundhouse music venue in um, London. So, where did you find these keys? Well, they were my keys. So they were in your pocket? Yes. We'd, we'd been to the concert. Who were you seeing? Who were you watching? The late, great Chris Cornell, who's sadly no longer with us. Ah, yes. Um... Are you familiar with his work, David? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know his work with Savage Garden? Okay. Now you've said Savage some other Garden. words in an order. What are they called? Sound Garden. Sound Garden. What? Sound Garden. Sound Garden. Yeah. Are you familiar yeah, with his Sound Garden. Work? <laughs> oh, that is just brilliant. <laughs> it's like watching two people on Last of the Summer Wine debating grime. <laughs> So, Who had you gone to the gig with? Um, so I went to the gig with, with Neil. Neil's a friend of mine. How do you know Neil? From childhood. Oh, so is he from Liverpool as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does he live in Kingston? Yes. So <laughs> coincidentally, <laughs> two friends from Liverpool grew up so, together, now live near each other, miles away in Kingston. Well, I wouldn't say coincidentally. I mean, we, we kind of... We moved to the same place as each other. OK. So, talk us through the key mix-up incident. So, I pulled out a tissue out of my pocket and I heard a set of keys land on the floor. And I thought, oh, hello, 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 someone's dropped some keys there. <laughs> <laughs> I picked the keys up yeah. and I didn't recognise them as my own keys. Why? What do um, your keys have on them? Like a, well, I, a what had happened is I'd put a new keyring on them earlier that day and oh. I just didn't recognise them That's instantly. The new key, what was the new key ring? It was a, a heavy-duty um, Harley-Davidson. A whole-size bike? <laughs> 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 so I held them up in the air yeah. and shouted, has anybody lost any keys? And nobody answered. How come you didn't check yourself first and Because go... I didn't recognise them as my keys. But did you not think to check your pockets to see if you had your keys on you? Well, would you check your pockets for your keys if you found keys that you didn't think were yours? But I would have thought the first thing to do is have a feel to see if your keys are in your pocket. If you owned a red phone and you found a blue phone on the floor, would you check your pocket to see if you still had your red phone? <laughs> <laughs> That's a 
a fair point. That's a fair point. So nobody claimed ownership of them, and, and so I, I asked Neil, can you go and hand these in at the lost property, cos somebody's dropped them. Yeah. Right. And then I went home. Right. So I get dropped off, and then I'm having a rummage, mm. and I'm like, I don't know where my keys are, I've lost my keys. That's a bit funny, isn't it? On the same day that I found somebody else... <laughs> <laughs> I see what's happened here. <laughs> and then I had to phone Neil and ask him to come back and get me. What colour was the phone? <laughs> <laughs> it's a lovely image, isn't it? Those two up north in Liverpool going, one day I'm gonna, I'm gonna move away to London. <laughs> the other one going, can I come? <laughs> yes. Of course you can, Neil. You can look after the keys <laughs> and I'll buy us a lovely big house. <laughs> All okay. right. What, what about David? You sat on his shoulders. Yeah, remind us of this claim. Yes, I once sat on his shoulders to get a better view of a fat chaffinch. <laughs> Is there a breed called a fat chaffinch? No, this was a rotund example of, of the right. common or garden chaffinch. Where did you have to it was sort look of over? Up in a tree. And Neil was keen for me to get a good look at it. Why? Um, <laughs> it, because I'd expressed an interest in birds. He said there was a lovely, you know, interesting, <laughs> quite fat chaffinch <laughs> in this tree. <laughs> and I sort of went, oh, yes, the, you know, oh, yes, I can. Yeah. And, but Neil felt I could get a better look at it, and he was right. I didn't get a perfect view. I had a sort of sense of a bit of wingtip. Coming over the side of the, um, <laughs> I can see it now. Um, <laughs> yes, um, and Neil I... is literally stood there going, "Thank God I don't really know this man." <laughs> <laughs> so, and I sort of climbed up, and there was a bit of a gate there, right? And I climbed up a bit. Can I just he... interrupt you a second, David? Let's it's... just get to the nub of Please. the issue. How the hell do you know him? <laughs> <laughs> because I was staying with my family in a holiday cottage in Cornwall, let's say. Yes, Cornwall. <laughs> and he lived in a nearby cottage. And one morning, it was a lovely... One morning, lovely, he lovely, said, lovely. hello, young David, who I've never met before. <laughs> Have you ever seen a chaffin? Yeah. <laughs> um, How old were you? It was last year, so I was... Last still... year, you got on his shoulders. <laughs> I just assumed it was from your yeah. childhood. I mean, no, 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 no. This is current me, and what I am asking you to believe <laughs> is that Neil is strong enough to bear the weight of me for a few brief moments while I enjoy see... the miracle of nature. <laughs> <laughs> but why is he there? Well, he lives near there, and he happened to be there. Just, happened. just happened to be, <laughs> happened to be in there. the garden. No, I don't know. Was he, he in the happened garden? to be there. For all I know, he'd been waiting there all night. Right. But I assumed we just encountered each other. Is this in the back garden? No, a little gravelly area At outside both cottages. Yeah. Casual chat. Yeah. Lovely to be here. Yeah. And he says there's an interesting uh, fat chaffinch. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not forget, you said you were on gravel. So if this went wrong. It would, as somebody who has fallen from a height, <laughs> <laughs> gravel's not what you want. You want a flower bed. I wasn't in a position to ask for the ground to be relayed. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get on? I don't mean. Oh, we went out for tea and coffee. <laughs> How did you get on his shoulders? Up the gate. Oh, you said you got on yeah, the yeah, gate. Stepped on his yeah, shoulders. Yeah, How long yeah. were you up there for? Uh, I'm no more than an hour. <laughs> <laughs> an hour. <laughs> For the bird watchers, paint a picture of the chaffinch. It's sort of pinky front. Pinky front. Pink, a browny back. Browny back. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, beak and eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so evocative. Back to you in the Spring Watch studio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, we need an answer. So, is Neil Laura's wet workmate, Chris's sleepover saviour, or David's bird watching buddy? I have to say, first impressions are that Neil and Chris look about the same age. But the bit that I'm doubting is he heard the keys mm -hmm. drop and he's just taken something out of his pocket. I mean, if you drop keys, you know you've dropped keys, surely. There were literally thousands of people coming out of this building creating noise and mayhem. There's a lot of savage There's garden a lot fans. Of stuff <laughs> going on. Go, what do you think? I think Laura's telling the truth. I think Laura's telling the truth. Yeah. Why? The tension was there. You think there's a tension? Yeah. yeah, there was an awkwardness. Mm. Mm. Um, OK, well, I'll go with my team and say Laura. You think it's Laura? Neil, would you please reveal your true identity? 
and Neil. And Chris had to stay at mine after handing oh. over the keys into Lost Property. Yes, Neil is. Chris is sleepover saviour. Thank you very much, Neil. Which brings us to our final round, Quickfire Lies. And we start with... It's Lee. For the last six months, I've been secretly liaising with David's wife behind his back. Oh! <laughs> Wait, about... Like... Oh. I, mean, I mean, I'm interested to know uh, what that means. <laughs> <laughs> What was the reason? To, uh, to, to make communication with her. <laughs> We've been emailing backwards and forwards. And... <laughs> Look at David's face. He <laughs> looks genuinely concerned. Why did you email her? Email her is very, like, formal. She wouldn't answer my calls. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember that period you were parked outside for a few days. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is Victoria Corrin Mitchell, just in case people... Is it? ..don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've been emailing the wrong person, I've got to go. <laughs> so why have you been yes. communicating Well, I've sent her... I asked her a question. And, um, What was the question that you asked? <laughs> the question and I asked what her... was, interestingly, her answer? <laughs> OK, well, her actual answer was, oh, come on, give me a chance. <laughs> OK. <laughs> the question was, um, uh, it was a series of numbers uh, with a question mark. Is there... this a quiz question? Yes. Right. So you've sent her a quiz question. Let's say that. <laughs> so all this is, all this is, everyone, and there's no need to think about anything else. Yes. It's just a question for the sequences round of Only Connect. Let's go with that. <laughs> Did she ask you for a question, or did you just I give slightly it to her? forced myself yeah, into the situation by texting like her, but but we. Well, like, text her or emailed her. There was a bit of everything. We had, a, we, had we even met up face to face. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very awkward laugh, David. <laughs> <laughs> We had a little secret conversation at your house. Where yeah. was David at the time? He was upstairs playing Trivial Pursuits with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what she called it. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, can you do me a favour, can you not tell David what's going on? And she said, OK, absolutely, no problems mm -hmm. at all. And I said, and also, don't tell him about this question thing either. <laughs> <laughs> because, um, <laughs> I could use it for would I lie to you? All right. Yes. So what do you think? I, I feel like, David, you should probably answer this more than either of us, cos you know Victoria quite well, I hope. Well, I thought I did. <laughs> uh, people do pitch questions for Only Connect yeah. quite a bit. I think we're going to say true. You're Ooh, saying yeah. true? Well, Lee, truth or lie? It is true. Yes! <laughs> it's true. Lee really has been secretly liaising with Victoria. Well, that noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show, and I can reveal that Lee's team have two points and David's team have three points. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Good night.